for our discussion of uh, marijuana or cannabis or its active ingredients, THC, I've broken out our lectures into two separate topics. Um, first, we'll talk about a basic introduction to cannabis or marijuana and uh, its mechanisms of action, its pharmacokinetics, which of course differ on its administration. Talk a little bit about the pharmacodynamic, pharmacodynamics of THC, physiological effects and psychological effects. In our next lecture, we'll talk about medical marijuana, tolerance and dependence, and um, controversy over legalizing marijuana. <coughs> Let's start with a basic introduction about what marijuana or cannabis is. First, this is the most commonly used illegal drug in the world. Uh, oftentimes, the most controversial. Uh, a lot of Illicit drugs aren't controversial. Most people agree they should be. This is one that there is a great deal of controversy over. It's difficult to classify uh, pharmacologically because it's like sedatives, but it's not like the barbiturates because uh, they're in high doses. It may alter perceptions, even pain, but does not produce anesthesia, coma, or death. Uh, and there's not much cross tolerance between the active ingredients in THC and either LSD or other hallucinogens or barbiturates. So it's kind of its own uh, mysterious uh, category of drugs. There are three different types of plants involved. Uh, Cis sativa, which is hemp, which is tall and woody. Uh, indica, which is grown in India, which tends to have a higher THC concentration. And ruralis, which is mostly grown in Northern Europe and Asia, has a shorter growth period and a lower potency. Some question about whether these are different species or just varieties of the same species. Not too much for us to get involved with. These are not self-pollinating plants. The female needs pollen from male to reproduce, so the flowers of the female exude a sticky resin to help catch male pollen and protect seeds from heat and insects, which is, of course, where the high THC concentration is, is in that resin. The active ingredient <coughs> is primarily uh, delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, which is THC, it's the same as delta 1 tetrahydrocannabinol. Cannabis products include hashish and charas, which is the dried resonance exudates of the female flowers. This is the most potent form of cannabis, which is about 10 to 20 percent THC. Uh, ganja and sensimilla are dried materials from the tops of female plants, about 5 to 8 percent THC. And, uh, the remainder are the dried remainders of the plant, which is about 2 to 5 percent THC. So the degree of active drug will depend on which type part of the plant is involved and uh, various other components associated with any other agricultural product, always a little bit varied. There's a long history for the use of cannabis. Um, lots of ancient civilizations cultivated and widely dispersed before recorded history. The earliest accounts come from China in 2700 BC, starts to spread to Southeast Asia and India. Uh, the ancient Scythians brought it to Palestine, Egypt, Russia, and Europe. Uh, it's long been used for fiber to make rope, cloth, oils, medicines, and of course for intoxication. The Greek physician Galen cautioned that use might lead to senseless talk, and if you've ever hung out with anyone who smokes a lot of pot, you probably noticed that. In the Middle Ages, um, Cannabis, in particular hash, came to the Muslim world and Africa was, of course, said to make you crave sweets. It's high, was said to improve sex and creativity and decrease sex drive. There's some question over the term, the origin of the term assassin, but it certainly comes from the word hashish. There is some counts uh, of the earliest, uh, what we would now call radical terrorists, um, being sent into a sort of pleasure garden um, smoked hashish and then sent out to uh, engage in uh, assassination attempts and acts on the belief that they would then get to return to that paradise. It's certainly related to uh, criminality. And the word assassin does come from hashish. Uh, in the modern era, Napoleon's troops brought back recre recreational marijuana from wars in Egypt. The more things change, the more they stay the same. This was certainly the case in Vietnam War as well. Uh, certainly became very popular in France. Medicinal use was reported in many papers to be useful for treating many ailments. Um, in the 20th century, uh, alcohol prohibition may have facilitated uh, increasing use. Uh, I actually saw a really interesting show about this era in which uh, rather than outlawing uh, its use, 
there was a federal tax based on its use and then it was made illegal to transport across state lines so it became impossible to get the tax stamp. Um, by 1970 the Comprehensive Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Act, what we now call the Controlled Substances Act, uh, made marijuana possession a misdemeanor. Its distribution is of course still a felony but its possession a misdemeanor. There are a variety of mechanisms of actions associated with uh, the cannabinoid agonists, which are characterized by actions that can influence cognition, perception, motor function, appetite, neuroprotection, sleep, neurodevelopment, hormone release, and do have effects on analgesia. And we're going to talk about medical marijuana in the next section on uh, THC and marijuana actions. There are a, a variety of mild uh, actions from THC itself, which include mild sedation, relaxed sort of euphoria, which is of course that idea of being high, heightened sensations, that is certainly a heightened attention to sensations. There are reports of analgesic effects. Uh, there is clear time and sensory distortions, impaired cognitive functioning, in particular working memory and long-term uh, long episodic memory are impaired while the individual is under the influence. Uh, an absence of brainstem action, but doesn't affect um, breathing at all. And there is some question about specific immunosuppression. There might be some effects on the immune system. Uh, it's interesting that the cannabinoids and the opioids share several pharmacological properties, including, of course, analgesia, sedation, catalepsy, hypotension, hypothermia, and in fact, cannabinoids and opioids can therapeutically be used together. Uh, in fact, there is some question about what's called morphine sparing effect. That is, by combining marijuana with uh, opioids, you can get increased pain relief through lower doses of morphine. So there is certainly some evidence for the medical use of marijuana, particularly in pain relief. Uh, let's turn now and talk about the pharmacokinetics of these drugs. There are, of course, over 400 different substances found in the plant, but THC is the most prevalent and certainly the psychoactive component of cannabis. If uh, this is taken orally, that it is eaten. It's a pretty effective way uh, to dose, not as effective as smoking, but cannabinoids are very lipid soluble. So they tend to be absorbed from the gut slowly, but absorption can be improved by adding oil. This is the reason why a variety of these products are baked. In a lot of states with medical marijuana, you can actually purchase baked products rather than uh, marijuana itself. And certainly having oil in those brownies, etc., will help absorb that uh, THC. Larger oral doses are needed to have the same effect as those are inhaled, of course, because we get the first pass metabolism effect. So it is metabolized before it actually enters the bloodstream, so there is reduced uh, overall absorption. Inhalation, of course, uh, around 50% of cannabinoids enter the lung, almost all that enters the body. About 0.4 to 10 milligrams of THC is actually absorbed into the blood from smoking one joint. Reaches the brain in about 30 seconds and peaks after about 30 to 60 minutes, which will last about 3 to 4 hours. The subjective state can last for about 12 hours. It's very difficult to quantify the dose effects and since there is great variability in use. This is much like when we talked about nicotine. The way people smoke is going to have a significant effect on how much drug they absorb and how well it's absorbed. So once it's absorbed, it then of course gets distributed, uh, it's taken out of the blood relatively fast and moves into fatty tissues. So certainly somebody's body composition is going to affect how much uh, THC moves into fatty tissues versus has to be moved out. About 25 to 30 percent of a single dose may remain in fatty tissue for a week. Uh, continuous doses will accumulate in fat and may take weeks to leave after you stop. This is one of the reasons why um, marijuana has such a long ability to be found in uh, drug testing is because it sticks around in body fat and is continuously released. There's some question about whether or not this is what's called reverse tolerance, that is people become less tolerant because they have more buildup in their fatty tissues, but there isn't a lot of evidence for that. Uh, the drug is mostly metabolized by the liver. There are active metabolites. There are complex interactions amongst the various cannabinoids. 
and the overall half-life of a single dose can be highly variable from 20 to 60 hours and may be much shorter on chronic users, so people who are not chronic users will have longer half-lives. Uh, these are highly variable products. This isn't a manufactured product, it's a grown product, so the half-life often varies based on the dosing. Um, in terms of excretion, about 40 to 65 percent of marijuana is excreted in feces, the rest is excreted in urine. Chronic users may show positive urine for a month after stopping smoking marijuana. So there's a very long time period uh, in which someone will test positive for this particular drug. Some information about uh, THC's pharmacodynamics. Of course, sedation and mild to moderate analgesia are uh, known effects of THC. They're limited by its partial agonist action. These aren't complete agonists. Um, and the sedation isn't as severe as with other drugs, Neither, and the analgesia is moderate. Again, some evidence that in combination with opioids will provide a better pain relief effect. There are certainly anti-anxiety properties associated with marijuana use and possibly anti-aggression and anti-anger. There are some time and sensory distortions associated with marijuana use, certainly impaired coordination and impaired cognitive functioning. It impairs the ability to focus attention and filter out irrelevant information. And deficiencies are, these deficiencies are subtle and may involve persistent absorption of THC from fat stores. So these impairments are very clear, certainly in coordination and cognitive functioning, and the time and sensory distortions are, of course, fairly obvious. Um, what's important, and we're going to talk about in the next lecture, is thinking about how this might affect uh, complex skills like driving. Uh, states that are starting to legalize marijuana are having to struggle with trying to come up with appropriate levels of THC for uh, driving <coughs> under the influence. But they're certainly clearly impaired cognitive functioning. There are some physiological effects to talk about as well. Uh, some of these are pulmonary effects. THC is a bronchodilator initially, but then might constrict the bronchioles. Certainly can impair lung functioning. This is due to smoking. Uh, has nothing to do with the drug itself, but to the other stuff that comes along with smoking. Uh, there is limited evidence about lung cancer and other types of disease. The problem is it's very rare that you have a pot smoker who doesn't have other lifestyle issues. Um, a lot of them smoke uh, tobacco as well. Certainly can't be healthy to uh, inhale the smoke, but uh, the drug itself probably isn't having the effect. There are some cardiovascular effects that dilate small blood vessels in the whites of the eyes, i.e. bloodshot eyes. Uh, it does increase blood pressure and heart rate, which can be frightening to somebody who's new at smoking pot, but people become very tolerant of that. Uh, interestingly, it does decrease intraocular pressure. That is, it is a treatment for glaucoma. Uh, glaucoma is increased in intraocular pressure. Marijuana will decrease that intraocular pressure. There is no tolerance that builds to this, and there are eye drops under test to uh, try to develop this into a treatment for glaucoma. Uh, peripheral cannabinoid 2 receptors in the heart might be protective against ischemic damage, so it's entirely possible even that marijuana use might protect against um, heart damage. There are, of course, respiratory effects. There is no depression seen, uh, as we see in opioids, and no one's ever been known to overdose from marijuana. Um, there may be a slight decrease in testosterone and female hormone levels, but recovery does occur. Uh, THC can cross the placenta. Not clear whether it's a teratogen, but probably best not to, um, to uh, smoke pot during that time period. There is mild fetal growth reduction in maternal lung damage excuse me, uh, involved. Uh, there are questions about the immune system. There's no consistent impairment in healthy subjects, uh, and there's no evidence that users are more susceptible to infections. There is question about uh, individuals with weak immune systems, people who are, for example, on drugs to limit their immune system, or an HIV AIDS patient uh, is a question. Now, marijuana is used to avoid wasting in HIV and AIDS patients. So uh, there are questions about the appropriate use uh, for these drugs. One of the important um, beneficial effects of marijuana from a mar medical marijuana perspective is it is effective against nausea and vomiting. Uh, 
the most effective route of administration for treating nausea is inhalation, but there are some problems with that. Some people find smoking the drug nauseating, so that doesn't help. Tolerance will develop, but this is one of the uses for medical marijuana is to mitigate the side effects of chemotherapy, which can cause very severe nausea. So that is one of the potential benefits of this particular drug. No surprise here, people get dry mouth and thirsty. There is increased consumption of snack food, which may depend on the setting or the dose, but certainly people do get the munchies. In terms of motor effects, people tend to just not motor much at all. We get ataxia, muscle weakness, and tremor, which may be, uh, there may be useful effects um, for marijuana as an antispasmodic, that is, as a muscle relaxer. So there are a variety of reasons to think that there might be uses for marijuana in a medical setting. Let's turn to talk about the psychological effects. There are, of course, functional effects, certainly may impair performance of driving and other complex tasks. We do know there's decreased attention and concentration. People are easily distracted. I'm sure, that's no surprise to anyone. Uh, there's a belief that it increases creativity. There's no consistent evidence of enhancement. What it does seem to do is reduce inhibition, so people tend to be more open to ideas. There is decreased visual perception, particularly peripheral vision. Uh, of course, decreased pain perception. and decreased time perception. People tend to overestimate the passage of time. There is evidence for short-term memory impairment, uh, what we call temporal disintegration, which is the loss of the ability to retain and coordinate information for a purpose. So people can't really plan complex sequences of actions during um, abuse episodes. There are some suge subjective effects at low to moderate doses. There is a sense of relaxation. People get dreamy, introspective, laugh a lot. People can get some mood swings to anxiety or panic, in particular at higher doses. And more than any other known drug, effects are modulated by the surroundings. Um, that is, self-recorded mood ratings are correlated with the mood of others. So one of the reasons why this is such a social drug is people tend to hang out with other people who like to smoke pot, and then they all have a good time together. Questions about brain damage. Will long-term use of cannabis produce damage? In uh, most studies, no. Uh, seven months after exposure, there's no detectable differences in behavior, hippocampal volume, neuron size, or synaptic and dendritic anatomy. There's no evidence that pot is in any way related to aggression. In studies that find correlations, cannabis is actually associated with a decrease in violence. Most of the violence associated with drugs in this instance are with the sale side, people wanting to uh, be involved in the sale of these drugs, sale and distribution. Uh, finally, a note about marijuana and driving. According to a 2006 national survey, um, about 12% of 12th graders reported using marijuana, marijuana in cars, which was higher than the percentage who reported using an alcohol. Um, so 13% versus 10%. And Colorado has now become the first state to limit THC levels while driving because marijuana is now legal. Okay, well next time we're going to pick up on tolerance and dependence, talk about some, the pharmacodynamics, and then talk a little bit about medical marijuana and marijuana legalization.